Assalamu alaikum. Today I'm going to be talking about the neural centers that regulate the food intake. And this presentation is presented by Amal of Madison on the 2nd of March 2013. To start with, you have to know that the basic centers for regulating hunger and satiety are present in the hypothalamus. Now, as we already know, that any mechanism that takes place in our body has to have something to stimulate it and something to stop it or to inhibit it. Regarding the stimulatory centers for, feed, for feeding and hunger and satiety, they are basically the lateral nuclei of the hypothalamus, but they are not the only ones. The lateral nuclei of the hypothalamus is stimulatory. By stimulatory, I mean that it's going to stimulate you to keep on eating and keep on eating. And it's going to be called the feeding center. When you keep on eating and you keep on having desire to more food and more food, you're going to be in a condition called hyperphasia. If I had a lesion in this lateral nuclei of the hypothalamus or any kind of injury in this place, it's going to lead to a condition called aphasia. We already know that whenever something is injured, you're going to produce an effect which is going to counteract the normal physiological function of this place. So the normal physiological function of this lateral nuclei of the hypothalamus in regards to feeding is going to lead to hyperphasia or feeding. Whereas when you have an injury or a lesion, means that something wrong is going out in this place, it's going to lead to aphasia, leading to a condition called inattination. By inattination, it's going to be a condition which is basically marked by uh, weight loss, muscular weakness, and decrease in metabolism, which actually makes sense because the person is aphasic, he doesn't even eat. Another center which actually acts as a stimulatory center for feeding and for hunger it's going to be called the dorsimedial nuclei of the hypothalamus. So we said that the dorsimedial nuclei of the hypothalamus and the lateral nuclei of the hypothalamus, both of them are stimulatory centers leading to hyperphasia. The other effect is the inhibitory centers in the hypothalamus. And these inhibitory centers are basically the ventromedial nuclei of the hypothalamus and the paraventricular nuclei of the hypothalamus. They're responsible for satiety, which is aphasia. They lead to aphasia in regarding to uh, hunger and so, so you're not going to have enough um, enough desire for food and for eating because they are inhibitory centers. So they are going to inhibit your feeling of hunger leading to aphasia. And they're going to produce your feeling of satiety, which means that you actually do not feel that you need any more food. And the lesion in these areas is going to lead to hyperphasia, which counteracts the normal function of this center as well. So we talked about the stimulatory and the inhibitory centers, but are they the only centers that are going to be responsible for feeding and hunger? Of course not. We have another very important center called the arcuate nuclei. This arcuate nuclei is going to uh, actually respond to the hormones released by the GI tract and the adipose tissue. Also something to keep in mind, that this arcuate center is going to be incompletely isolated from the general circulation by the blood-brain barrier. I said incompletely, meaning that it's going to have direct access with the circulating factors that are going to be released from the GI and the adipose tissue for it to carry its normal function of regulating food intake and energy expenditure. Okay, how does it do so? In the arcuate nuclei, we have two important population of neurons. And these two important population of neurons are pro-opio melanocortin neuron, which is usually um, shortcutted as BOMC, and neurons that produce orexigenic substances. What do I mean by orexigenic substances? Orexigenic substances are substances that are going to stimulate your appetite. And the opposite of orexigenic substances are anoroxigenic substances. To make it easier to understand or to learn, you can relate anoroxigenic substances to anorexia. Anorexia is going to be the condition where the person does not eat, meaning that anoroxigenic substances are going to be appetite inhibiting neurons and oroxygenic substances are going to be appetite inducing neurons. So we're going to be starting our talk about the POMC. 
the POMC are going to produce two substances, alpha melanin stimulating hormone and CART, which stands for cocaine and amphetamine related transcript. This alpha melanocortin hormone is going to act on melanocortin receptors that are found in the paraventricular nuclei. We mentioned that the paraventricular nuclei is an inhibitory nuclei of the hypothalamus, which means that it's going to inhibit your hunger and it's going to lead to your satiety. And therefore, it's going to lead to a decrease in your food intake and increase your energy expenditure. Regarding the decrease in your food intake, we already understood it by mentioning the paraventricular nuclei. But how does it in increase your energy expenditure? It actually does so because it activates the melanin melanocortin receptors. We already have five subtypes of these receptors, but the most important subtype regarding the feeding and the hunger physiology is the MCR3 and the MCR4. What would activating these receptors lead to? They're going to activate neural pathways from the paraventricular nuclei, which is the inhibitory centers that we talked about, to the nucleus truncus solitari. Also, it's going to stimulate the sympathetic nervous system. The sympathetic nervous system is the fight and flight system where you're going to be so stressed and so anxious and you have no time to feel hungry, right? So by this way, it's going to decrease your food intake and increase your energy expenditure. Our second neuron are the neurons that produce orexigenic substances that are substances that stimulate your appetite. These substances are the NPY, which is the neuropeptide Y, and the agouti-related protein neuron. And both of them are going to increase your food intake. You have to keep something in mind that these two neurons that we have been talking about, the neurons in the arcuate nuclei that are the POMC and the orexigenic, um, the, the neurons that produce orexigenic substances, they are the major target of hormones that regulate appetite, like leptin, insulin, um, CCK, and ghrelin. We finished from the regulators in the hypothalamus, but what actually um, basically controls the feeding mechanism. It's controlled by centers in the brainstem. Now, these centers are two. They are the amygdala and the prefrontal cortex. The amygdala is a center which has been very much linked to the olfactory nervous system. Basically, in the process of linking a memory with a smell. Like, for example, when you smell your mother's perfume um, in any place, Unconsciously, you're going to relate this smell to your mother's memory, and this is the function of amygdala. Another thing that they already have found that the destruction of both sides of the brain of amygdala is going to lead to a condition called psychic blindness. By psychic blindness, I mean that the person is going to eat anything, whether it's meat, rubbish, feces, totally anything. It also has other, um, other consequences like the loss of fear and aggregation and no facial expressions. And uh, the, the animal is going to mate with anything regarding if it's the same sex or different sex or if it's an inanimate object. But basically regarding Regarding our topic, we have to keep in mind that it's going to produce psychic blindness. So, thank you very much. Um, this has been my presentation regarding the neural regulation of um, the feeding and the hunger. My basic reference is uh, the Guyton textbook of uh, medical physiology, the 11th edition. If you have any questions, corrections, feedbacks, please contact me on this email. Thank you very much. Have a nice day and assalamu alaikum.